None of the content on this or any episode of the Kratom Science Podcast, Kratom Science Journal Club, or on any page of KratomScience.com is intended, nor should it be considered medical claims or medical advice. This is the Kratom Science Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gallagher, blog and social media writer for KratomScience.com, your source for all things Kratom. My guest is Stacy Lloyd. She's a microbiologist, GMP compliance specialist, and founder of the Kratom Vendors Association, an organization that is dedicated to helping vendors meet good manufacturing practices. When I graduated from college, that's when I entered uh, the pharmaceutical and biotech world um, in microbiology, and that was like the late 1990s. So most of my experience has been in quality control microbiology. I've managed microbiology labs. And while I was doing that, I completed my master's degree in quality assurance and regulatory affairs from Temple University School of Pharmacy. So, you know, I found after working in the industry, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed what I was doing. And so um, I wanted to further my education by getting that degree. And then, you know, I did some computer validation and implementation of computer systems and software programs in laboratories, the microbiology and chemistry. And then I worked in quality assurance. I managed uh, the global quality assurance uh, department for um, one company. I've worked at uh, many large companies such as Bayer and Pfizer and Novartis. But um, I've also done some consulting for startup companies, working with biologics. Uh, I was a a VP for quality assurance for three uh, different companies that were uh, manufacturing biologics. And then I was also consulting and doing some auditing. I started doing some auditing for the American Kratom Association. And that's when I um, started getting very interested in the Kratom industry. Uh, you know, I found that Kratom vendors were lacking knowledge of GMPs, which is completely understandable. I found that there was a gap there of compliant GMP compliance in the industry. And it really concerned me, you know, here I'm thinking, uh, there are Kratom vendors out there that are not GMP compliant, and they're producing Kratom, they're shipping it out to consumers, and consumers are ingesting or, you know, consuming these, this kratom and who knows what, what standards, what, who knows what is in that kratom. And it really scared the hell out of me. And, um, you know, my passion is for quality and consumer safety. And so I decided to start the Kratom Vendors Association. And I I wanted to, to build this association so that I, I could provide support, GMP compliance support to Kratom vendors. We just launched in March and, you know, we've set up a very diverse advisory board and it's really been exciting. You have a couple of scientists that I've had on the podcast on the advisory board. How are they going to contribute to this this, uh, mission here? Sure. So I personally selected each and every advisor on our board. And I wanted it to be diverse. I wanted to get professionals that would contribute in some way to helping Kratom vendors. And so we have um, Dr. Oliver Grunman and Dr. Christopher McCurdy and Dr. Chuck Veltry on uh, our board. So they are all Kratom researchers, very well known in the industry. And then we have our GMP compliance specialists. So we have Sherry Strong, Blanca Padrino, Ron Hare, Lisa Anthony, and Enrique Baez. And they do all the consulting and auditing uh, for the Kratom vendors. And then we have a training developer creating training in the pharma and biotech industries for over 20 years. Um, Gary Steele. And then we have um, a couple vendors on our advisor bo- advisory board. We have Sam 
and Soren from Top Tree Herbs. They work with uh, Dr. Grunman and Mm -hmm. Dr. McCurdy as well. And then we have Joey Levin from Super Specioso. So they give us uh, the perspective of of the Kratom vendors. So they're going to help us with coming up with uh, new offerings, new product services, help us with pricing, um, just kind of give us the insight of the Kratom vendor. And then finally, we have Melody Wolf um, on our board. She's a Kratom advocate and uh, she's doing some blogging for us. So we really have a great advisory board that we've put together um, that's really going to help our, the Kratom vendors a lot. And I think you mentioned four of our podcast guests, so good choices there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, for somebody listening, they may have heard of the American Kratom Association's GM program. I, I mean, what's the difference between what the Kratom Vendors Association does and what uh, maybe the AKA GMP program does? Um, sure. So the Kratom Vendors Association offers SOPs. We have, uh, we sell individual SOPs. We have SOP uh, packages as well as offering consulting sessions with our GMP compliance specialists. We also do auditing for our own GMP certification program, as well as for the AKAs program. And we have training courses, uh, GMP training courses, as well as general training courses. You know, I mentioned our GMP certification program. It's, it's different from the AKAs GMP standards program in that the AKAs GMP standards program, their process is... You apply, you pay their $5,000 fee, and at that time, you get their approval seal that they can use on their marketing materials and on their website. And then um, that vendor needs to undergo an audit by a third-party auditor. When they pass that audit, um, the report gets sent to the AKA, and they approve the vendor. For the Kratom Vendors Association, our GMP certification program is a little bit more robust, and it's also free. Our process is the vendor um, applies for the program. They have to become a member of the website, and that is because we want to make sure that they have all the resources they could possibly need to become GMP compliant. So they become members, they apply to the GMP certification program. We do a preliminary review, which is $150. And that's for the time that it takes to do that preliminary review. And in that time, we are looking for any major GMP compliance gaps. So we want to make sure that vendors are entering the program process to be successful. We want everyone to be successful. And so that preliminary review um, can identify any major gaps and allow that vendor to use the resources on our website to resolve any of those gaps. Um, And then they undergo an audit by one of our auditors. The auditors are limited to the amount of money that they can charge for that audit because I wanted to protect Um, auditors from getting overcharged. um, So they cannot charge more than $1,600 for the audit. When they've passed the audit, uh, we have our advisory board meeting each month. And at that meeting, we will invite the vendor and the auditor. The vendor will give a brief, you know, five minute introduction about their business. And um, the advisory board is um, there to ask questions, to make sure that they understand GMPs and their business. And then the auditor is there to present their audit findings and any remediation um, that they had to do to become GMP compliant. And then at that time, the advisory board will vote and um, they will decide on whether the vendor is ready to be GMP certified or not. And they get a seal Um, Just like the AKA gives, we have a seal that they can use on their marketing materials and also on their website. So I just want to ask you more general questions about quality compliance just to just to um, 
you know, uh, let people know why this is important because, you know, Kratom's a tree. If we had Kratom in our backyards, which we don't here in the United States, we could just pick the leaves off, make sure they're clean, uh, make them into a tea like they do in Thailand or Indonesia, and, uh, you know, it would probably be okay. Uh, what happens between when they harvest leaves in Indonesia and ship them over here and and a vendor receives that, packages it, and sells it to a customer? What happens between in those steps that requires uh, these quality control uh, measures that need to be put in place? Yeah, so um, for, from the time that those that the, the leaves are growing on the tea, on the tree to uh, the processing and milling and packaging and shipping. Um, there's always the chance of bacteria and or mold being found. And that's why it's so important to do your microbiological testing of the Kratom before you ship it to your consumers. Yeah, we know there's like bacteria and and, and it's kind of hard. I guess it's harder. Like we can't control what goes on in Indonesia. Although I've had uh, farmers co-ops here that, that say, you know, they're trying to as much as possible uh, build clean facilities. Uh, they were having a hard time getting the price they needed to do that from uh, the buyers uh the american buyers um and but but unfortunately sometimes you know there's just no regulation so it's left out to dry in fields where uh you know animals can walk over it and whatnot i guess just quality control in general um like once it gets to the uh the place the vendors you know place uh, receiving warehouse and whatnot, uh, what can happen then that might cause the Kratom to become contaminated or, or unclean? Sure. Well, you have to think about the process um, and, all, you know, all the different processes that there are that depending on what type of, you know, if you're doing Kratom powder or, you know, you're doing capsules or tea or whatever, you have to think about the processes. And, you know, anytime you have um, human interaction with a product, there's always the potential for cross-contamination. So, and that, you know, that's where uh, personal protective equipment comes into play. Um, you know, uh, so even... Even if you are 100% GMP compliant, you still have that potential of the product getting contaminated because you have that interaction with humans. You can't just, you know, in your in your living room or basement or backyard or wherever, mm -hmm. your garage, um, you, you can't just buy some bulk kratom and fill it into bags and sell it to people. Um, if you're doing that, you're seriously jeopardizing um, the safety of your consumers. That's why GMPs are so critical. I mean, you need to have a, a quality unit in place that's separate from your production management because the quality unit has to, uh, your quality unit is your checks and balances. And so they kind of set the controls based on GMPs. And so therefore, they need to be separate from the production act activities because they're kind of the oversight of the production activities. Mm -hmm. And you need to have, you know, proper facilities. Uh, there are things like, um, you know, you need to have a pest control program and uh, you have to maintain the grounds around your facility. You have to have, um, you know, equip the proper equipment in place. Um, and your instruments need to be calibrated. You need to have log books. You need to document everything. You need to have personnel that are trained and qualified that wear PPE, protective, uh, personal protective equipment. Um, you know, you need to have specifications and they need to be checked to make sure that you're meeting those specifications. And you need to do product testing, of course, to make sure your product is clean, to make sure your cleaning processes are effective. You need to have many manufacturing controls. And so, you know, you can't have all that if you're operating your business out of your home. How many vendors are actually, do you think, are actually following this? I mean, it seems like a lot of vendors have good intentions, and they might even have clean product, uh, but they're, they're not, 
you know, following this to a T because it's there's no regulation that states that they have to. Even the KCPA regulations are mostly labeling requirements. And it gives the state a little bit of power maybe to go in and shut somebody down if they they find that it's contaminated. But I'm not sure if you have this information, but do you know uh, the percentage of Kratom vendors that are doing really following GMP versus maybe they just have that label and, and they're, it's like a good faith agreement between the AKA um, versus how many really ha- have the log books and the facilities and the and the clean um, protocols? The kratom industry is is still an unknown, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's not a whole lot of information out there on the internet. Uh, I haven't seen any statistics uh, about compliance. Although I think that would be very hard to get because I know that there are many vendors that think that they are GMP compliant when they're mm. actually not. The AKA um, in doing audits for vendors, you know, I, I found that um, many didn't have SOPs. Um, some tried to write the SOPs, but it became too cumbersome. They just got lost, you know. You know, I found that many want to be compliant and they 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 care about product quality, they care about consumer safety, and they just need some guidance. Um, because I mean, any layperson that looks at GMPs could be very confused. And even I as a professional, you know, if if you read through GMPs, they're they're pretty vague. Um, you know, they'll tell you what to do, but not how to do it. There's a little bit of interpretation and everybody interprets a little bit different. Um, and so you really need that experienced compliance person um, to consult if you're a lay person and you're starting to, you know, trying to start a business or in, and you want to be GMP compliant, you really need to consult a compliance specialist. And that's why we offer compliance specialists on board to, um, to provide that help. I've spoken to a lot of people that are just small business and they've found uh, some good suppliers and um, they take Kratom themselves and all they do is ship it and they package it into uh maybe they have a vacuum sealer um they have uh they made some nice labels uh and maybe they even send it out for testing contaminant testing uh, alkaloid testing but that's kind of where it stops because it's not regulated for them to do that what kind of investment because it seems like there might be a couple of companies that are on the um you know, in the bigger end of things that are doing this because they can afford it. But uh, for like a small business person uh, that's selling Kratom, what kind of investment are they looking at? Which I think, you know, it would be a good long-term investment because I think eventually the regulations are going to be in place. Is it in the tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands? Can somebody, you know, maybe with like 10 grand or 20 grand, become GMP compliant. That's why we are not charging for our GMP certification program. Mm-hmm. It can it can be costly, especially in the pharma and biotech industries. That's when you're talking uh, tons of money. Um, but, you know, for Kratom vendors, um, becoming compliant, it, it can, we've, we've made it affordable for them. They, mm-hmm. um, Kratom vendors only need to become a member um, and that's two thousand dollars for the year, and that they get all kinds of freebies uh, with that membership, including like GMP training, um, which is very costly. If you Google GMP training, you'll see it's like two thousand dollars and up for GMP training. So um, we offer a lot of freebies with the membership, and you know, I I did that on purpose. Like I limited the amount of money that auditors can charge. You know, I've I've made the membership affordable. I've made the GMP certification program free, and that's because I want Kratom vendors to be able to put their money into their businesses and build their businesses. Um, you know, I'm not looking to get rich with this association. I, I really enjoy helping people, and I see a need, and it's a passion of mine. And you know, I want to be able to make GMP uh, compliance 
uh, affordable for all Kratom vendors, even just the mom and pop facilities. I guess, oh, you talked about SOPs. That's like standard operating procedures. Yes. Can you just explain like what that is? Because that's just like a basic level thing. Why are SOPs important? That's the question. Sure. So SOPs provide consistency, right? So if you have SOPs in place and everybody's trained on them, which they need to be, then you have a standard for how you are performing each and every activity in your business. And if everyone is trained on it, you will have consistency in your activities, your production activities, your processes. So they're really critical. So yeah, so the things that we had mentioned on our website, Alcoa Plus, um, we have a training course for that. And that's the basic principles of good documentation practices. So um, GMPs require that you um, complete your documentation in a particular way. And there are standards from that. And those are covered in Alcoa Plus. Vendors should have safety data sheets for any chemicals that they have on site. Those safety data sheets provide um, information about the chemical, um, any hazards, um, you know, like if you get it in your eye, what to do, uh, if it's, uh, you know, causative to your uh, skin, things like that. So those are important to have on site. Uh, Let's say someone is... Uh, making a bleach solution and the bleach, they're not wearing safety glasses like they should be wearing when they're mixing chemicals and the bleach splashes up in their eye and no one knows what to do. Well, you that's why you need safety data sheets and it will tell mm-hmm. you what you need to do. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, personal protective equipment. I've seen it run the gamut with Kratom vendors with what they choose to wear, but they should be wearing a hair bonnet. If they have a beard or any facial hair, they should have um, a covering for that. They should be wearing a lab coat, whether it's, you know, reusable or disposable. Um, Gloves, of course, are critical. And shoe coverings. That's to prevent cross-contamination. And so PPE is really critical because you don't want to add anything any, you don't want to have any cross contamination when you're filling powder into bags. Um, so it's important to protect against any hair falling falling into the mm-hmm. powder or any jewelry. You shouldn't be wearing any jewelry, you know, things like that um, to make sure that your product doesn't get contaminated. Is this a problem throughout the dietary supplements industry and the food industry? My interactions so far with Kratom vendors have been from um, the AKA. So they're, they're already, these vendors already have decided that GMP certification is important mm-hmm. and they care about product quality and consumer safety. So I haven't had any direct experience with any, you know, with Kratom vendors who are like the hell with GMPs, we're going to do what we want. I'm going to do this out of my garage. I don't care. And it's hard to change that mindset, right? You know, if they don't value GMP, then what kind of business are they going to have? If they they don't find value in it, they're not going to be accepting of it or open to it, unfortunately. And it just seems like with the dietary supplements world in general, you know, there was that movie, Chris Bell did the Kratom documentary, and a few years earlier, he did a documentary called Bigger, Stronger, Faster, where where he was showing how anybody can go in their kitchen and fill a bunch of pills with rice flour and have, like, one tiny ingredient in it uh, and sell it as a supplement, and uh, that's, you know, just okay under the Deche Act. It seems like, why do you think there's not as much, like, FDA oversight of this kind of, like, gray area world where it's not exactly a drug, it's not a food? Why do you think that is? You know, I, I have to wonder if it has something to do with plants being so unpredictable. There's so much variability from plant to plant. I'm wondering if that maybe has something to do with it because it's harder to control. Mm. Um, 
And of course, you know, the, the first thought is, well, money probably, but you know, you never know. I, I, I would think that there would be more consistency with synthetic drugs since you're creating them. Um, although I, you know, I haven't created drugs myself, so I don't know, but I would think um, there would be more variability with plants and it, it would make it more difficult uh, like, have you heard of some of these um, studies where uh, they just did one in Richmond and Walt Prezelik did one in Chicago a couple of years ago where the scientists from the yo- local university just go around, uh, buy Kratom from different stores, and then they find that there's extra amounts of lead contamination in them. Uh, there's like Fenibut in some products that isn't even marked as Kratom plus Fenibut. Uh, and, and there's all these other things. Like, do you have any thoughts about that? I mean, it obviously like uh, necessitates uh, the need for, you know, a GMP uh, s- system. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard about those studies and um, it actually made me want to do the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, I've already, really. been, I've already been, you know, pulled my microscope out of my closet and started looking at Kratom under the microscope. Mm. Uh, just, uh, you know, to see what I can see. Okay, so if uh, I'm a vendor and I want to become GMP certified, how long does it take? Uh, well, that would actually depend on the vendor. Um, it, it would depend on um, what their current GMP status is. Um, If they have a lot of uh, big compliance gaps, it'll take some time to remediate those. Um, So it will really depend on the vendor themselves. Yeah. And and you said you were an auditor for the AKA. So so, uh, how does that work exactly? How does like an auditor work? Um, Sure. So um, when uh, the AKA uh, has a vendor apply to their program, um, Ryan of the AKA refers that vendor to me. And, um, and then we, uh, and then I, you know, perform the audit for them. So that may entail a lot. Most of the time, it, they're not ready to be audited. And so it involves writing SOPs for them. Um, doing a mock recall with them because they have to do that every year, doing GMP training with them because that's required every year. Um, So, yeah, typically when vendors come to me or or are referred to me, um, I I have to get them GMP compliant first, and then I can refer them to another auditor for the audit. What, What we look at is we look at all their processes, we look at um, their SOPs, um, their log books, make sure they're documenting things, um, look at their cleaning and sanitizing program, make sure that they're um, uh, qualifying the vendors that they use, um, and that everyone is GMP trained. So we look at all those different things, observe um, the operations, uh, watch them, you know, do filling of, of uh, the product, ask uh, questions of the people that are working, you know, do some interviews. Um, so all of that is involved in the audit. I know you guys are brand new and you might have only had a couple meetings. What is the advisory board um, doing to get this process going and this organization going what kind of things are they advising on so right now since we've uh, recently launched we are talking about just things that are happening with the association we're talking about um, how we can draw in kratom vendors we're also looking at partnerships with the aka and some other companies Um, some companies have reached out to us about uh, partnerships we're kind of figuring out how we want to work this and everybody's kind of feeling out how they can contribute. But, you know, the advisory board was put into place to, you know, help build and grow the company and provide advice because I don't have all the answers. Our advisory board, just our GMP compliance specialists alone have over a hundred years of experience combined. 
to bring all of these people together is really amazing. And and what we can do together as a team, Um, it'll be great to uh, follow Oliver and Chris and Chuck um, with their researching of, of Kratom. Um, I'm hoping Mm -hmm. that Chris McCurdy will uh, be involved in some clinical trials soon. That would be really exciting to hear about that and possibly be a part of that. Our Kratom vendors that we have on the advisory board, they're um, providing uh, such great feedback because they have the perspective of the vendor. They have been in business a long time. They've built their companies. um, They're GMP compliant. So they can really provide that unique um, perspective of the vendor and they can help us with thinking of other products or services or training courses that we can offer and also in pricing yeah. things. Just giving that perspective alone is so invaluable. So I'm hoping to bring on a couple more vendors to the advisory board so we can really have a good group um, instead of just having two perspectives. I'd like to have more perspectives. Yeah. So, the advisory board is phenomenal. And I really think that it's really going to make this association excel. And I think that we can really make an impact on the Kratom industry. There's nothing out there for them right now, you mm-hmm. know, or before we came along, there, there was nothing. They couldn't turn to anyone for help. The AKA is great. And what they do, you know, with legislation for Kratom, but compliance specialists, they're not. Um, and so they can't really help uh, vendors like we can. Um, I love what they're doing and I'm so glad that they are um, rooting for Kratom and out there working hard mm-hmm. um, to stop these bans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to have that support of, of, of several GMP compliance specialists, really it can do nothing but make your business successful. Well, I do want to mention that our, our membership, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, our membership is $2,000 for the year. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's set up in such a way that you can pay monthly if you'd like. Um, so that makes it affordable. Yeah. Um, and and like I said, we have we offer so many freebies with that membership. If I could mention some of those benefits, um, when you become a member, you are eligible uh, to apply for the GMP certification program. We offer three free 60-minute uh, sessions with a GMP compliance specialist. So you can get your questions answered or if you have a particular topic you need help with, um, mm-hmm. you can use them for that. We offer training discounts and free training courses. Um, for example, you need to do GMP refresher training every year. And so that's free. Um, and that's a, a very good value for that. Like I said, GMP training is about $2,000 a year. Um, We also offer free batch record assistance. So if you need help creating a batch record or modifying your existing records, that's included in your membership. We also do um, a company highlights. We will highlight your business and promote your business on the website. Um, We also will review your website for GMP compliance to make sure you're not violating any labeling uh, requirements. Mm-hmm. And then um, we're going to be doing uh, roundtable discussions each quarter, um, and we'll have the board um, participate in that. And so Kratom vendors can ask questions. Um, they can also interact with each other during uh, those roundtable discussions, which is really great for networking. And, Absolutely, um, yeah. You know, getting advice from others, see how others mm-hmm. are doing things. Um, they get exclusive blog access. So if we have anything special we want to offer to our members, um, it will those blog posts will only be uh, available to members. And then we'll give you a free facility floor plan. That's something that FDA or an auditor might want to take a look at when they come to do an audit mm-hmm. or an inspection. We'll also create an organizational chart for you. That's another thing that the FDA and auditors will want to see when they're auditing or doing an inspection. And then many other free resources. So they really, it's a $5,000 value and and we're just offering it for $2,000. And I think that it's such a good value and we provide all the resources that they could possibly need to become GMP compliant. It seems like this is a, like a great service and it's actually going to help people and help 
our whole community access good Kratom. So I'm all about it. That's good. Thank you, Stacy Lloyd. Check out KratomVendorsAssociation.com. Please like, subscribe, share, rate, review. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Kratom Science. The music is Risey. The song is Memories of Thailand. The Kratom Science podcast is produced by me, Brian Gallagher, for KratomScience.com. Take care.